So I think we can get started. Hi, my name is Suchita Srinivasan, and I'm with my co-host, Azra, and our panel today is Tech Girls, Inspiring Girls in Technology. So before we get started, here's a little bit about us. I'm Suchita Srinivasan, like I mentioned before, I'm in 10th grade, and some of the extracurriculars that I participate in include marching band, robotics, and Model UN. I'm also a teen advisory board member of Tech Girls, which is our topic of discussion. Hi, I'm Azra, and I'm also in the 10th grade. I play in the girls varsity flag football team at my school. Outside of school, I'm a devoted Girl Scout pursuing the Gold Award, focusing on giving back to my community. I also co-founded Code Sisters. So before we get started, let's just give a brief overview of what we'll be talking about. So first off, we'll start by talking about our experiences and technology. How did we get immersed in technology? Then we will explore how we got involved in Tech Girls, our experiences in TAB, their team advisory board, and what we do as TAB members. Lastly, we'll discuss how Tech Girls helped us and why students should join Tech Girls and or TAB. So to begin with our experience in technology, my experience began with Scratch when I was in fourth grade. My parents had shown me this uh, Udemy course and asked me if I would like to learn more. And despite not knowing what Scratch was or what programming was, I was very interested. I soon became very excited to learn and I found that Scratch was an amazing program to start learning computer science because with the easy drag and drop method, students can understand the basics of computer science without the complicated syntax that comes with typical programming languages. From there, I learned various other programming languages such as Arduino, Flutter, et cetera, and participated in multiple CS competitions. I also kickstarted my robotics career by participating in FLL, the first LEGO League competition when I was younger. This competition is offered for students in ages nine to 15, and it gave me experience not only in programming, but also in STEM and offered a very inclusive community. However, while participating in FLL, I noticed how many of the students, including those on my team, were mostly male. And at that young age, I hadn't really understood what that meant, but it was something that I had noticed, and it's one of the factors that led me to being part of Tech Girls, and more specifically, the Teen Advisory Board. I was exposed to coding at the beginning of the pandemic in sixth grade by my father, who's a software engineer. Because I was so intrigued by the complexity of coding, I sought out resources to learn programming languages. I taught myself some introductory coding skills, such as writing algorithms, and later built on my knowledge by taking courses and participating in various certificate programs. Now I know over three programming languages, including Python, R, and C++. Like Suchita, I also did robotics. Last year, I was in my Girl Scout Troops VEX Robotics team, where I coded the robot to accomplish tasks. So going on to our main point of discussion for today, what is Tech Girls? Well, Tech Girls is a nonprofit powered by CompTIA Spark. It provides fun, interactive, and engaging workshops for girls in grades five to eight. These workshops are free for all participants with a curriculum of 30 plus technology topics. Since 2010, the Tech Girls program has served more than 40,000 middle school girls. But how did we get involved in Tech Girls? Well, for me, I started off by being a student in their class during the pandemic. During the pandemic, I had so much time on my hands, so I decided to use that time to further broaden my knowledge in technology. I loved Tech Girls because it offered a community for me to grow and be surrounded by like-minded girls who were interested in learning more about technology or just STEM. I was first involved with Tech Girls when I took their Python workshop in the seventh grade to further my knowledge of Python. The volunteers of the workshop showed a lot of resilience in the face of challenges presented by the virtual setting. Despite encountering various technical issues, they remained steadfast in their commitment to engaging the students and cultivating a nurturing environment. Not only did the volunteers teach important skills, but they also focused on empowering young girls. 
I continued to take classes from them until the end of my eighth grade year when I was eligible to apply for TAB. So earlier and in previous slides, we've been mentioning TAB, but what is it? TAB stands for the Teen Advisory Board, and it's a group of girls in high school dedicated to spreading the message of tech girls and inspiring girls in technology. TAB has monthly meetings where we have the opportunity to meet other high school TAB members from all around the United States. As a part of our commitment to TAB, we set two to three leadership goals we would like to accomplish by the end of the academic year. These goals are designed to help us give back to our community. Additionally, we are inspired by the keynote speakers invited to speak. For example, last year, Jackie Means was invited to talk to us about how she founded her own STEM initiative at the age of 16. So how did TAB and Tech Girls help us? Well, for me, being surrounded by girls who were very dedicated to spreading the Tech Girls mission motivated me to provide girls opportunities in tech. Um, it's very, very rewarding to see girls understand advanced topics through the Tech Girls curriculum. For example, in one of our workshops, specifically artificial intelligence, um, students were able to understand complex topics such as neural networks and linear regression through the easy to understand Tech Girls curriculum. Tech Girls also helped us through the various keynote speakers that we listened to in the monthly meetings. These keynote speakers shared their stories about balancing work and life, perseverance, challenges, and etc. I often use their advice in my everyday life as well. As a leader of various clubs at my school, it, these advices have been very beneficial and very helpful in many cases. In addition, TAB helped us by providing internship, panel, and other educational opportunities. Last year, one of my TAB goals was to be a workshop lead at Tech Girls. I volunteered for multiple workshops, eventually inspired to organize some of my own in my community for girls. I believe volunteering at Tech Girls refined my leadership and planning skills and even gave me the opportunity to share them with my own community. It was all thanks to the supportive environment and the hands-on experience at Tech Girls that I was able to do so. Moreover, TAP provides a fantastic network of like-minded peers and great mentors dedicated to guiding one in the STEM journey. That's actually how I made Suchita. TAP is a great community and it's a community of its own and I'm sure any girl would be happy to be a part of it. So ultimately, Tech Girls is a great opportunity for girls to meet equally ambitious students through both online and in-person workshops and learn about a variety of different STEM and technology topics. If you would like to learn more about Tech Girls, here are their socials. Let me paste them into the chat really quickly. Could you guys Okay, well, we seem to be having a bit of a technical issue, but that concludes our presentation. So thank you so much for listening. And you have, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down into the chat. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Thank you very much. I remember hearing about this um, probably a couple months ago from Suchita and was happy that you guys could come on and talk about it. Tai Nguyen, do you have some questions that you'd like to ask? Yes. So how can this help people be responsible in the digital world? Yeah, so Tech Girls provides many curriculum um, and workshops for students in grades five to eight. And it really just immerses them into technology and specifically the digital wor world. So some of our curriculum is about cybersecurity and really emphasizes the imp importance of privacy and security in the digital world. And in general, just gives students an opportunity to learn that while technology is super fun and super cool and very interesting to learn about, it's important to um, be safe in the digital world as well.
Thank you for your answer. And let me ask, is this all? And let me ask, is this only for girls? Is this project based also? Hazra, if you would like to answer that. Sure. Um, well, it's targeted towards girls, but I'm sure they'd be happy to have you as well. <laughs> Yeah, and in terms of it being project based, it um, Techros is working towards providing a basis of computer science knowledge so that you can use that knowledge to build projects. For example, as I mentioned before, in the artificial intelligence program, we talk about how uh, neural networks work and how different parts of artificial intelligence work so that students can use that knowledge to build projects to further their um, experience in technology. Okay, thank you. I think he had also asked um, about the cost. I think he asked if the, it was free. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of this is free and it's um, meant for girls in ages five to eight. You keep answering my questions that I've gotten written down here, so I can't ask them. I keep scratching them off. I do wonder if you have anything, uh, any curriculum that you guys are working on that goes into the subject of um, chat GPT. Or, I mean, you guys, is it is it subject worthy, curriculum worthy at this point? Um, as of right now, I'm not sure if we have a curriculum that is being developed specifically about ChatGPT, but it definitely is uh, worthy to be talked about because it really is a huge milestone in terms of artificial intelligence and both positive and negative way. Um, so it's definitely worthy, but I'm not sure as of right now if we're creating a curriculum about it, but it's a good, it's definitely a good idea. I was just curious. I mean, I know a lot of people that use it for various levels of their work. I use it when, when I remember to use it, which isn't very often, but I do use it now and then as well. I mean, in fact, there's a session coming up in 15 minutes uh, led by young Gia Nag out of um, India. She's 11 years old and she's doing a student talk on uh, chat GPT uh, with some kids around the world. Tywin, are you going to that? Well, yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Malia, did you have any questions? Yeah. First of all, I think that it's really interesting. I think the idea is really interesting because, yeah, it's a really big problem because the girl in the text are not really present. And I think it's really a great idea to expand it. And I have a question. What for you is your next step for being known and for really like uh, make the girl in this uh, curriculum? Azra, if you'd like to take that question. And I can add on. Uh, sure. Um, could you please repeat the question? Um, okay. I heard the yeah. curriculum part. Did it kind of yeah, that? Uh, I have my question was like, what's your next step to um, expand your idea and to be known uh, by like, you know, the words and mm -hmm. uh, to explain the idea? Sure. Um, so, well, as tab members, we also help refine the curriculum we are yeah. given an opportunity to be a part of great opportunities such as this one um so we would be you know taking advantage of those opportunities and helping refine the curriculum for girls to make it even better and my next steps personally would be to make more little workshops in my own community because tech girls is online and they have in-person workshops at other states, but in the state that I'm living in California, we um, were not able to, you know, connect with them in person. So I'm gonna be kind of like that liaison in California. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, as tab, mem tab members, our goal is to kind of expand and let people know of tech roles and what we plan on doing as a part of this organization um, through a variety of different methods, including this panel um, and how we plan on 
giving girls more opportunities is through these workshops, whether that be online or in person. So for me, I currently live in Connecticut, and Connecticut is a pretty small state, but there aren't many opportunities for girls in tech here. Um, in fact, the first like CS opportunity that is introduced um, in the school is actually in high school. So it's very important that we bring these opportunities at a young age so students become aware of them and they can start thinking about whether they want to pursue this opportunity or pursue this career or not. So this past summer, I've held a few workshops at um, in my local community to kind of let people know about these different um, CS and STEM topics and give girls uh, a community for them to share their knowledge and learn more and just share their excitement as well. You know, okay. you hit on, I'm sorry, Alira, go ahead. No problem, just go. You hit on a really important topic and that is waiting too late to get involved or get students involved. And I spent about 18 years at the Ohio Invention Convention, a couple, about a year and a half after that at the uh, what's now known as the National Invention Convention. And one of the trends that I saw is uh, girls were as excited about innovating as boys. In fact, we had a higher percentage in Ohio of girls than boys. But what happens after that is they get like past that middle school age and there's nothing else for them. And if there's nothing else for them, they're going to go a different direction because they don't see a path forward. And so what you guys are doing is you're putting a path out there in front of these girls and it's going to keep them going. So that's really, really important. And I don't know if you understand how important that is, but that'll be huge in uh, reducing that drop off at, at about that middle school age of girls that just, OK, forget it. That was fun, but there's nowhere to go. So definitely. It. And yeah, definitely. And at least for me, I see how different girls who try it out, maybe in high school, they they also come in with a few inhibitions. Like as you get older, you keep some. You come to realize like, oh, you start to notice different patterns. Like, oh, okay, I see a lot of males in this industry and not a lot of females. Maybe I shouldn't pursue that field. And that kind of, those inhibitions prevent you from pursuing that career. But at a young age, like I mentioned with first Lego competitions, first Lego league for me, um, while I had noticed it, I didn't think it was like a big deal. I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm here. I'm excited to learn more about robotics and so on. So if you build that knowledge and if you build that excitement at that young age, um, they will be invested in it by the time they get older and they'll be like, well, this is what I'm interested in. I want to continue pursuing it no matter what. Yeah, well, and and that important part is that you're giving them that continued path as well. So that's that's a lot. I was curious as to your um, in-person classes, do you, or in-person in workshops, I guess, do you find that those happen, where do you find they happen the most? Are they in somebody's house? Are they in a school after school hours? Are they in a community center or library? Where are most of those performed? Um, it's at my community center. So they were really happy to host me, help these girls. And I was really excited about it. So everybody comes together in the community center um, every two weeks. And then I teach them about something new. So yeah. do you have um, online interactions with them as well and just meet in person every two weeks or you literally just only meet every two weeks? Um, every two weeks in person. I prefer it to be in person because I feel like that's how the children can get the most out of what they're learning. Okay. For me as well, um, I held them at my local community center. I know, um, at least personally, when I talked about it to the public library, they're not able to uh, strictly just let girls do it. They can't say only girls can do it. Guys can't do it either. So um, that wasn't a possibility at the a library where I taught a few of the workshops, but at my community center, we can like stress that, you know, we really want to inspire girls in technology. That's our mission. So a lot of the workshops that I've held are theirs at the community center. Okay. Well, I had you had another question that I interrupted earlier. 
Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, it was more like a suggestion because, yes, I think it's really important to the workshop. And also in the long term, I think the technique, like the tech is really important too for connecting with people because I have seen that there is a lot of um, technical girls projects uh, who are like chat group and all over the world. And I think it can be like interesting to get in touch with those group and to expand. Yeah, definitely. That kind of networking would be super amazing and just expanding tech girls and letting people know that about our mission and just inspiring girls in technology, not only in the US, but in other places as well. Yeah, and to also, because uh, the girls who are like scared, because I have friends who, who are scared to get in tech and are really afraid of maybe the difficulty. And it can be interesting like to cheer experience, uh, like, you know, those forum and to use some example for sharing experience and for the, girls can be more um how can i say it confident to go in it i agree ty when did you have another question looked like you're raising your hand earlier no okay <laughs> we girls are doing good work very good work out there and if there's anything we can do to support your efforts please don't hesitate to ask and we'd always welcome you to any of the global innovation field trips um, if you want to do a educator talk or a student talk or something where you're engaging kids to gain their interest and you know start up more chapters around the world or whatever whatever it is you need all you have to do is ask and and we'll do everything we can to help you so thank you for all of your efforts you're thank making you. a difference so important. thank you and there is about seven more minutes. So if there's anything else you'd like to add, you can feel free. Um. Um, I think that is all I have to say. Just, you know, if you are a girl who is thinking of pursuing a career in STEM, um, no matter what, go for it. You know, see what opportunities you can find. And even if there isn't many opportunities at your school, there's always like YouTube to look at tutorials. Udemy is a great place. Um, just get started, dip your toe in the water, see what it's like. And if it's something that interests you, keep going. And if it's not, then that's okay. But at least you gave it a shot. Excellent advice. And if they really enjoy it, they can do what you two are doing and then start leading others and, you know, start chapter where they are. Exactly. A hundred percent. Very good. Thank you both very much. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, for sure. Thank you a lot. Thank you. You're welcome.